Okay, hello everybody. This is Anarchic Awakening. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a series of videos that are going to chronicle the strategic uh, mistakes and tactical mistakes of the feminist movement. And the reason why is because the Gynarchy movement is a separate movement. But that doesn't mean we can't learn from the failures of other movements in order to build ourselves up. In fact, one thing we need to do, and when I'm saying, when I said in a previous, you know, video that I said don't argue, I wasn't just talking about don't just argue, don't just not argue with the people who are intent on killing us. Don't argue with, with feminists who demonstrate themselves to be unreasonable. Um, and the reason for that is because if they are not willing to accept the fact that they have been out-strategized, if they will not accept the reality that after, after how many decades of trying to reason, trying to educate, uh, that the men have either put, put uh, fingers in their ears and refused to listen, or have chosen to ramp up their abuse against everyone. Since that is the case, since it's going to be like that, why allow, why give somebody else your time and energy that you can use to build yourself up? There, this isn't even just a matter of opinion anymore. This is well documented, very well evidenced by that movement. Can you imagine where that movement would have been if instead of focusing on arguing with them, they were trying to build girls and women up intellectually, trying to just support women businesses? That will get you a lot farther than arguing with the men does. Because guess what? After 20 years of argument, still rapes, still sexual assaults, still harassment. There's still like these mass shootings. They're so they're like happening every other day. Rise of hate groups. Uh, loss of right. I mean, do I do I even need to go any further? I mean, again, I, I know I said it before, but I have to say it in because I want to pound this home. That this movement is an absolute abysmal failure. And how long does it take? How many decades does it take before, as Gynarchists especially, we finally acknowledge this failure of a movement? How do we, how, when do we finally acknowledge that we are making no forward progress regarding these moral issues, regarding these social issues? And how long is it going to take before we finally decide it's time to adjust strategy? How long? Well, I'm not going to wait around for the feminists to decide that for us. And neither should you. I think you and your partner have the right to decide your own destiny. And as far as I'm concerned, these feminists don't get to fucking speak for me. These feminists, do, in my view, the way that they have allowed things to play out have not done anything substantial to protect women, girls, boys, and even other men. So therefore, that is precisely why I'm making this series. To document. Yeah, I'm trying to reorient myself because somebody just sent a text. Um, I'm going to first document one of the biggest mistakes they ever made. Um, the first... For one of the uh, their their missteps that I have to go over to help them understand why they fucked this up. So one of the things I kept hearing from the feminist camp was that we need we want men to be more vulnerable. Okay. The problem with this is that we have a society that grants multiple opportunities. For predators to fuck with little children and boys. Let me give you an example of what I am talking about. When I was a boy, I was in middle school. I was running around on the track. There were three young boys following me around. One of them grabbed a stick and was literally jamming it up my asshole. Not literally, but he was poking my ass with a fucking stick. He did this, and there were other students who were around the around the schoolroom, not the room, but students who either saw it 
and did nothing. Or you had students that, that did, did see that and they thought it was humorous or hilarious or they were apathetic and didn't give a shit or they were too afraid to step in. We have no system that this kind of stuff happens all the time where either the, the teacher is absent, the teacher doesn't do their job, um, and or there, these people find an opportunity when no one else is around, which does happen because of the way human beings move and 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 fun, and uh, where they decide to go, what dictates their their movements. Um, for example, if you are going to a theater late at night and it's not during an opening premiere, there's a possibility that if you step into a bathroom and the place is mostly vacant, if you're a predator, that's an opportunity for you to attack somebody. And then walk the fuck out. If you're like dressed up in some kind of gear or whatever, and you may, and you have a mask on, you could walk right. The person could walk right into the bathroom, knife you seven or eight times, or just beat the shit out of you, or rape you, whatever they're gonna do. And then they walk the fuck out. That's another example. You want some more? How about these alleyways? How about what happens when it's real? It's nighttime, and you're just walking home, and no one can see jack shit, and there are no cars coming. These are just some of the many examples uh, of times when opportunities present themselves to these predators. You want to how you want to know how it gets even worse? Imagine that you're homeless and you're sleep and I used to see this. There were these homeless people who were they don't they didn't allow it anymore, but they were sleeping outside of a forested area that was along the sidewalk. Now, can you tell me what's wrong with this picture and how badly this could get out of hand? Right? Imagine if while you're sleeping, somebody comes along and slits your throat and you're a homeless person. If you're homeless, who the fuck is going to call to report that? How do you know who slit that person's throat? Because the thing about homeless people is that they, they sometimes tend to be socially isolated. They haven't seen their family members in years. They have very few social connections and it could literally be some some kid, some 17-year-old who gets a hold of a box cutter and then just decides he wants to work on this dude's neck while he's sleeping. So there's a there's a moment for it cuz every cuz again, he has to go to sleep sometime and what in the you know the businesses they eventually close down. So the way we have set this shit up is if there aren't any homeless shelters or if the homeless shelters are at maximum capacity and you have these people who set up these tents or who end up sleeping uh, on sidewalks or whatever, you got somebody who comes over and they just start, they just, they can just slit your throat, walk the fuck away. Or they can beat the crap out of you, take whatever money you happen to be earning for yourself, then walk away. Or maybe they'll just beat you up because they can and they know that no one is going to report them to the police. And here's the worst part. How do you report somebody to the police when you don't even know who they were? If you're homeless and it's like the dead of night, you can't see who it is. The person might not even speak. So they beat the fuck out of you and it's like, okay, yeah, police officer, I'm supposed to, I need to report this random person I don't know uh, who beat the shit out of me. Um... I think he lives on Random Boulevard uh, at, uh, at Random Oaks. Yes, yes, I, I'm serious. Could you please look into this? Thank you, detective. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to go well. How about the fact that there are people within our population who are suffering from high degrees of narcissism, antisocial personality disorder, or psychopathy, who, A... Not only there's there's been documented evidence that the vast majority of abusers don't change even after therapy, but also that these individuals don't even acknowledge that they have a problem. I had a family member who suffered from narcissism. They never went to DBT therapy to deal with their narcissism. So not only are these people not getting the mental health treatment needed, these these predators who end up preying upon people and psychologically manipulating them into these positions of vulnerability within relationships. Basically, they build up a relationship first. They make it seem like they really care, they're attached, but then the mask drops and the, they use the emotional connection that they have forged with the other person 
in order to keep them in that relationship, to coerce them and to control them. So you have people like this who are who can be men, can be women. Sometimes they could be boys, sometimes they could be girls. You can actually spot them if you use a certain kind of brain scan that sees if they have empathy or compassion. So actually, um, there are ways to identify these individuals. And yet, despite the fact that we have means of identification, uh, and despite the fact that we know that these people exist in our populations and do the things that they do, they abuse privacy to their advantage. They cause social turmoil. They turn people against each other. They are walking, talking uh, uh, agents of chaos and destruction. The idea that, oh yeah, they're just, they, like, not, oh, I remember I heard a really terrible argument once, like, but they're not shooting or stabbing people as if that were the only way to inflict harm on human beings or do lifelong damage. Uh, these people regularly abuse and destroy the trust that other people have in each other. And we as a society, what have we actually done? We only have two states in the United States with anti-abuse laws. And they only cover, I think, romantic relationships. They don't cover all relationship types. How are we going to make a, make the world a place where not only women but men can feel more vulnerable if we are not doing anything about the abusive behavior that these predators regularly engage in. And the truth is that there is no way that they could accomplish this. The feminists could not accomplish this because they cannot develop the proper community structure that would be needed for the surveillance to catch these people. This is entirely possible in a gynarchic community model. It's not possible for a so-called femi feminist society. So these are just some of the examples. I, I actually want to keep going because this is fun for me because I get to point out the flaws. But let's take a look at the housing unit. You're in your bedroom, right? You're locking your door. You think your boyfriend's really nice. And then he uh, forcibly takes you. Yeah. The, the mask drops and then you see the devil, right? How about another example? When you have, um, I had a family member who he seemed like the nicest guy in public, but behind closed doors, he's telling me racist jokes and he's trying to use racist programming on my brain in the form of repeated statements and mantras. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This actually happened. This, this, this dude was saying stuff like, if the white don't win, we all jump in. How many of you have heard have uh, who who are Caucasoid have heard this racist programming before? And how many of you how many times have you had a family member attempt to use it on you? That happened to me, and I am still dealing with the damage that that caused. So behind closed doors, in privacy, you got people doing all sorts of fucked up shit because they know nobody else is watching, or they would alter and adjust their behavior. How about we, the fact that we live in a competitive society, a competitive society where we are all fighting, uh, not fighting, but we are all competing with one another for jobs. We are competing to get higher up on ladders, corporate positions, so on and so forth. We are pit against one another. How do you create a sense of vulnerability when, the, when you have all this programming that teaches young men to exploit other people's vulnerabilities and weaknesses. Because if you're being taught to exploit other people's vulnerabilities and weaknesses, then you implicitly understand that other people are trying to do the same thing to you and they're not going to keep it in the ring. So if that is the case, if we are going to not only have opportunities or give these predators opportunities by the way that human traffic works, the, not trafficking, the way human traffic works, how people move about throughout their day, how people, uh, where people place their buildings, uh, how, pe how many security, like the idea of a security officer to me is always a joke. That is one of the greatest jokes that has ever been perpetuated on the planet. I'll, uh, yeah, I, this is, this deserves a part two. Oh, it's going to get a part two.